Hey folks, we're back. We're talking about rotational kinetic energy. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of uh, 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 angular or rotational kind of quantities that are really, really, really similar to our linear quantities, um, and rotational kinetic energy is no different. Um, I mean, when I think about something, let's go back to our candle example. I think. I keep using this candle because it, um, it has a really nice shape. It's a nice cylinder, um, and cylinders are kind of fun to talk about rotation with, right? If I think about rotating this thing, not even just moving it, but just rotating it, right? Not translating, rotating. Um, uh, I'm, I'm still having bits of matter, right, bits of mass move. Now the whole thing is kind of staying put as far as uh, 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 the net motion, the translational motion, but little bits of matter are actually moving. So I do have movement, I just don't have translation. And anytime I have movement, I have kinetic energy. So I now need to start talking about how to quantify that energy. Um, if I think about the uh, kinetic energy due to rotation, right, and I'm going to call that um, K or Ke rot, right, um, rotation, I'm going to say that that's equal to um, all of my little bits of matter that are moving, right, and they're all moving a little bit differently. They're all going to have slightly different velocities based on where they are relative to the pivot point relative to my, my axis of rotation. So I'm going to say 1 half uh, m1 v1 squared plus 1 half m2 v2 squared. I'm not going to continue this. I'm just going to say dot, 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 and then 1 half mi vi squared, right? So really, I'm summing this up like we've been summing uh, almost all our, our quantities up. Um, and I'm going to say I can pull out 1 half from this, and I can say that that's equal to my summation, right? My summation over i of mi vi squared. Now, um, v is this translational, right? Or, or not even translational, because we're not translating, right? We're rotating. So it's tangential, tangential velocity, right? So I can turn that tangential velocity into an angular velocity by saying that tangential velocity is equal to r times omega, right? So maybe, maybe let's change this. Let's say 1 half, and we sum over i, of mi times ri omega, um, and omega is going to be constant. That's the beauty of, of using omega. Omega is going to be constant no matter where I am in this in this object, right? Whether I'm near the the center of rotation here or whether I'm all the way at the end, I have the same omega around. The the radius ri is what scales. Right, the, the to get vi, and that whole quantity is squared. Now I'm going to have this ri squared business. Well, if I think about this, I can rearrange terms. I have one half sigma i m i r i squared times omega squared. Well, this business is just i. This is my moment of inertia. Right? If I if I think about the sum. Right, it's my moment of inertia, and actually, since omega is constant, I can pull omega out. Right, it's it's. Uh, I, I was a bit disingenuous here. This is an i. This is i. That's my moment of inertia. So what I can actually say is that k uh, rotational is equal to one half i omega squared. Right i omega squared. Now, if we think about how that translates from angular quantities back to, to linear quantities, I have k translational, k trans equal to 1 half mv squared. And really, again, these are almost, you know, one to one, just swapping out for my angular quantities. Almost all the equations that we know and love can be just swapped out uh, for their linear quantities, for, for angular quantities, and we retain the same basic kind of measurement. Um, so when I think about K total, right, my total kinetic energy, I need to consider not only the translational side of things, but also 
the rotational side. So total kinetic energy is going to be one half mv of the center of mass squared, that's the translation part of this, plus one half i omega squared if we are rotating. All right, so that is um, a rotational kinetic energy. Um, and uh, da -da -da -da. anytime that we start moving, not only do I have energy, right, I have kinetic energy, but I also have momentum. So that's where we're going to pick it up next time. We're going to talk about angular momentum. Uh, and we're going to have to use a cross product again. So uh, make sure you're feeling okay about that cross product business. All right, I'll see you here next time. Thanks.